On January 14, 2015, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, came to Cedar Falls, Iowa to recognize one of the best high-speed internet access that Cedar Falls Utilities gives not only to its valued residential customers, but also its business owners. Cedar Falls Utilities offers more than 11,500 Cedar Falls homes and businesses with internet connections up to 1 gigabit per second. Local business Spinutech had the honor of talking about their business and introducing the President of the United States. Spinutech is a Cedar Falls based web design, development, and digital strategy agency. Fifteen years ago when I was a junior at the University of Northern Iowa, I started Spinutech with two friends. We had big dreams of what we could accomplish and where we could all go. We quickly realized just how special a community Cedar Falls is and all that it has to offer. In our early years, it would have been easy to move the headquarters to another city, but we didn't. We stayed here. Thanks in part to its high-speed internet, Cedar Falls has always made it easy for us to grow our business. I don't think a lot of people realize how spoiled we are and what we even had. So if you don't know what you have, sometimes it's hard to really measure it. And this recognition is really going to push that to the forefront and, and be an excellent way to really help kind of boost Cedar Falls in a, in a very positive uh, projection. There were many reasons that President Obama decided to stop in Cedar Falls, but most of which were to talk about what he would discuss during his State of the Union address. It is with great honor that I introduce our president today. With President Obama coming to Cedar Falls, it is a testament to the amazing things CFU has been able to accomplish. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the President of the United States, Barack Obama. <laughs> Hello, Cedar Falls. Thank you. It's good to be back. As a country, we fought through the worst financial crisis and recession in our lifetimes. Uh, but the American people showed a lot of resilience and resolve. And there is no doubt about it, thanks to the steps that we took early to rescue the economy, to rebuild it on a new foundation, America's coming back. You know, last year was the strongest year for job growth since the 1990s. Unemployment, <laughs> unemployment fell in 2014 faster than any year since 1984. Our businesses have created more than 11 million jobs in the last 58 straight months. That's the longest stretch of private sector job growth in American history since 2010. America's put more people back to work than Europe, Japan, and every other advanced economy combined. I've been traveling across the country, rolling out some of these ideas. Plans to help more families afford a home. Plans to make more students can attend community college without loading up with debt. Plans to make more workers find good jobs in high-tech manufacturing. And in the 21st century, in this age of innovation and in technology, so much of the prosperity that we're striving for, so many of the jobs that we want to create depend on our digital economy. Depends on our ability to connect and to shop and to do business and discover and learn online in cyberspace. So this week I've been laying out new proposals on how we can keep seizing these opportunities in this information age while at the same time protecting our security and our privacy and our prosperity and our values. Through the Recovery Act, when I first came into office, we were trying to make sure that we prevented the Great Depression, but also start building some foundations for long-term growth. We built or improved more than 113,000 miles of network infrastructure throughout the country. That's enough to circle the globe more than four times. And we offered tax credits to help spur businesses to expand their networks. We've hooked up tens of thousands of schools and libraries and medical facilities and community organizations. And then we launched something we call Connect Ed, which trains teachers and spurs private sector innovation and is connecting 99% of America's students to high-speed internet. But, and this is why I'm here, We've still got a lot of work to do. Right now, 98% of Americans have access to the most basic levels of broadband, and that's a good thing. But that number doesn't look quite as good 
When you look at the speeds we're going to need for all the apps and the videos and all the data and th new software that is constantly coming on the market. We've got to keep pace. We've got to be up to speed. About 20 years ago, in a visionary move ahead of, ahead of its time, this city voted to add another option to the market and invest in a community broadband network. So having already made the smart investment 20 years ago, about five years ago, you said, we got to upgrade to a fiber network throughout the city. And eventually, with the help of some federal funding, the surrounding rural areas as well. So today, Cedar Falls is Iowa's first gigabit city. Uh, here's what it means. Your network is as fast as some of the best networks in the world. There's Hong Kong, Tokyo, Paris, Cedar Falls. <laughs> right? That, that's, that's, that's the company you're keeping. You are almost 100 times faster than the national average. And you can log on for about the same price as some folks pay for a fully loaded cable bundle. So today you've got small businesses like Mark's that are serving clients worldwide. Google named you the best city in Iowa for e-commerce. And what you're showing is that here in America, you don't have to be the biggest community to do really big things. You just have to have some vision and you have to work together. And we're seeing that same kind of innovation and that same kind of energy and foresight in communities across the country. With the gathering of hundreds of people to hear the president's speech, we were able to talk to the mayor of Cedar Falls and a few business owners that felt honored that the president was able to come to Cedar Falls to congratulate our city for being one of the best. Well, it's a huge honor to have not this kind of national recognition that bring, comes to our community and specifically to Cedar Falls Utilities. Uh, the citizens have been great over the years. We've received uh, statewide recognition from the governor. We've received it. From Google, we, re we received it. Uh, but it's also nice when you get national recognition from the Oval Office, wherever that's at. Regardless of what your polit political affiliation is, when you get this kind of endorsement of what you're doing, how you're doing it, it really is a nice honor for our community and Cedar Falls Utilities. You know, it's, it's a great honor. We saw the video on, and it's good. It'd be a good promotion for the city. Obviously, Google was here in October, and now he's here now, both talking about the great job CFU has done providing this service not only to existing but hopefully new businesses that want that for high tech jobs. Iowa is not known for real high paid incomes, so if we can get some more high paying jobs, it'd be great for our city. And so it's great to have him here. It's a very honored to be part of this uh, ceremony today. Uh, it started 20 years ago with the formation of the utility. I mean. To have the vision that long ago that we needed to have our own broadband network, uh, that, I mean, you can't say enough about that, that vision that, that they had, um, and then the support we've had that from the community from day one, and that support continues. You know, the, the community's behind us. Uh, we we uh, owe a lot of our success to uh, the support of the community and, um, you know, rebuilding our network with fiber from the ground up, um, and it was disruptive to people's yards we had to you know trench fiber into and in, you know through people's gardens and nobody likes that but it's done now and and this is an asset that that'll be available to the community for the next 30 years today in 19 states we've got laws on the books that stamp out competition and make it really difficult for communities to provide their own broadband the way you guys are in some states, it is virtually impossible to create a community network like the one that you've got here in Cedar Falls. So today I'm saying, we're going to change that. Enough's enough. We're going to change that so every community can do the smart things you guys are doing. So not long ago, I made my position clear on uh, what's called net neutrality. I, I believe we've got to maintain a free and open internet. Today I'm making my administration's position clear on community broadband. I'm saying I'm on the side of competition, and I'm on the side of small business owners like Mark. I'm on the side of students and schools. I believe that 
A community has the right to make its own choice and to provide its own broadband if it wants to. Nobody's going to force you to do it, but if you want to do it, if the community decides this is something that we want to do to give ourselves a competitive edge and to help our young people and our businesses, they should be able to do it. And that's why leaders from 50 cities and towns across the country, it's a coalition called Next Century Cities, have pledged to bring next generation broadband to their cities and towns. And that's why I'm announcing a series of additional actions to support their efforts and encourage more communities to follow your lead, Cedar Falls. I'm directing federal agencies to get rid of unnecessary regulations that slow the expansion of broadband or limit competition. They're going to report back to me in six months. The Department of Commerce, Penny Pritzker, uh, who's here, uh, they're going to work to offer support and technical assistance to communities that want to follow your lead and set up their own networks. USDA, the Department of Agriculture, is announcing new loan opportunities for rural providers. And this summer, I'll host mayors from around the nation at a community broadband summit to chart the next steps that we need to take. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to clear away red tape. We're going to foster competition. We're going to help communities connect and help communities succeed in our digital economy. And the good news is we know, we know it works because of you. You guys were like the guinea pigs on this thing. You know, you took a chance and you made something happen. And you're supporting jo the jobs of the future through faster, cheaper internet. We want everybody to do that. We may not always know what's right around the corner, but we know we'll figure it out as long as we're bold and we go ahead and work together. You know, we've, we've been through some very hard times. We didn't always know those hard times were coming. But we pulled together, we worked together, we relied on each other, we believed in each other, and we figured it out. We're blessed with the greatest natural resource in the world. Not corn, <laughs> but the pluck and the ingenuity and the willingness to take risks of the American people. And I'm absolutely confident if we just give Americans the tools they need, if we just help lay the foundation and allow them to access the amazing opportunities and technologies at this moment in world history, we're not just going to continue recovering from a bad recession. We're going to ignite the next generation of American innovation. And it's going to start right here in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you.